guys, today we're going to use brusho and watercolor to make this really cute little illustration. So I'll see you there. Hey guys, so today we are back to exploring brusho and watercolor, still trying to make things work, still trying to figure things out. Um, so I have this little illustration that I've already prepared. And if you'd like to work alone at, along at home, you can visit my Gumroad and I'll link that right here in the annotations and also below in the description. Um, so you can find it. This was inked with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida on Windsor & Newton's watercolor paper. It's a cold press, heavier watercolor paper. And I'm using some crepe masking tape, you know, just regular white masking tape to go ahead and tape down my image to my, um, honestly, it isn't to my table, it's to my Ink Essentials craft sheet, but close enough. And the materials for this tutorial you are going to need are a selection of watercolors in um, either tubes or pans, however you prefer to work, your brush a weld palette, um, some clean brushes, and at least one cup of water, as well as a spray bottle. And thanks to a really excellent suggestion, from one of my viewers, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in as much as I possibly can without it just being like completely obscuring my field of view. Cause they requested that I try to get the picture plane or the, the viewing plane at least 70% with the image I'm actually going to show you guys. And I was like, you know what? You're right. So the first thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to use a cerulean blue or a um, ultramarine blue, whichever you prefer, to fill in the sky. And I'm going to use my water dropper to fill one of my wells with clean water. I'm just going to apply a couple drops to the palette. I really just want a light all over wash. That aside for right now. And the next thing I'm going to do is while this is still wet, I'm going to apply a little bit of brusho. Here in the sky. sort of smooth some of those areas out. And then I'm going to use a clean paper towel to pick up some of my paint like clouds. I have an area over here where the brush -o sort of didn't dissolve, so use brush to motivate that. All right, and now we're gonna let that dry. So now that the sky is pretty much dry, maybe not entirely so, but pretty much, we're gonna go ahead and apply a wash down here on the moss and it's really just hooker's green mixed very very light. I just wanted to have sort of an under color like we did with the sky. And rather than risk certain areas drying out before I can apply the brush out, I'm gonna go ahead and put some emerald green in and some sea green in. And we're going to pretty much do the same thing. Treat the moss very similarly to how we handled the sky. Go 
go ahead and break up some of those areas a bit. We're not trying to get the colors to mix. Uh, we're just trying to get the the um, the particles of brush out to sort of dissipate and also create, you know, different areas of color. Especially over here. Unfortunately for you guys, the camera is picking up uh, the brush out as pretty much one tint of green. There's actually lots and lots of, there's blue greens and yellows and uh, teals in there. All right, I'm gonna let, wait, no, I don't wanna let that dry. I want to dab some of it up and the paper will reabsorb water. And if there's an area of gap like here on her leg, you can just gently brush color into that area, activating some of the crystals that didn't get activated. All right, dry time. This is mostly dry and I want some color bleed into the feet. So I'm just spraying sort of the surrounding area so that the color gets soaked up into the feet. And I'm going to apply a little bit of sea green. Hopefully that'll get sucked up in there. I think so. A little bit of emerald and use a brush to just sort of encourage some of that movement up. And I was using my hand to shield the spray so it doesn't just go everywhere. And while it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and dab up some areas so we get kind of that mottled effect. I'll go ahead and wipe this area off as well. That way it'll dry quicker. All right, so the paper is moderately dry, but not fully dry. So I'm going to use some clean water and just wet certain areas and then dip or sprinkle my brush out onto those areas. So some sea green. And if that isn't activated enough, dip into it like so. And if you're getting harsh edges rather than, you know, like a gentle bloom out, you can use clean water to blend it out. And maybe some emerald green. Like before, you can also blot out areas and it'll get reabsorbed in. So if you went a little too intense, you can blot some of that out. Whoa, that's gonna be too much. Right, guys again not fully dry but I'm ready to um, you know keep pushing and I went and grabbed leaf green because it is a more um, sort of a lighter green it's got more yellow to it and I definitely want some yellow in here to sort of liven things up too much yellow I'm also going to go up here in the distance and just sort of do some very light water gesture and then sprinkle the brush out into that just to sort of lighten th liven things up a little bit and lighten things up too. I mean pretty much anywhere there's water 
if you sprinkle some brush oil onto it, it'll start to bloom. So you're not really limited to just one area. You can really add a lot. Um, the problem is it's difficult to layer brush oil because as soon as you add water, you run the risk of reactivating the prior layers. At least on most of the papers I've tried, even nicer. I mean, it works better on nicer watercolor papers, but it is still a problem on the nicer watercolor papers. So it just, I think it might have something to do with the fact that brush oil is dye-based. And as before, if you put on too much, you can dab some of it away you can use this to sort of soften up hard edges if you want. Dabbing won't remove all of it, so it is really a good way to like add just a few little highlights here and there or sort of blend the two together better. So we've got an area over here that has pretty much lost all its contrast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and re-wet that area and I'm gonna use my paper towel to lighten it back up again. And you can see underneath it has some really nice yellow tones. All right guys, so this has had time to dry. So the thing I wanna do is I wanna remove this, take it over the trash can and brush off the excess brush out. So I'm gonna go do that. I went ahead and taped it down again. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is we basically wanna seal the brush out that's already on there. And you can use a water brush to do that. Because it's better to go ahead and activate any brush out that might be clinging to the paper surface that I wasn't able to brush off and be able to sort of pat that color away with a damp paper towel rather than activating it fresh when we're trying to put down something like skin tone, which could be really adversely um, affected by that sort of color. Especially since we're working with blues and greens today, those are two of the hardest colors to deal with when you're painting skin tones. Because they can quickly turn somebody who looks vibrant and alive into a zombie. Uh, they have a for the most part, they have a very neutralizing effect on most skin tones. Um, since most skin tones have a lot of, I mean, even olive skin tones, you know, you have your the blood in your veins underneath the skin. Most skin tones have a warmth to them that the um, blues and greens will just sort of sap that away. And before we apply any color again, we need to allow this sort of um, priming layer of water to dry completely. So instead of now, instead of having unplanned blotches, it's more like a wash. And that's something I can definitely paint with. Now would also be a really good time if you're painting with just one cup of water due to space limitations, now would be a good time to go um, rinse out your cup and refill it with clean water. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, from here on out, we're pretty much going to be treating this the same way we would any other watercolor. So I'm going to transition this into time lapse unless I encounter any unique problems I think you guys could benefit from hearing about. So I will see you guys towards the end.
guys, we are done with this particular brush o illustration. All that's left is to remove the tape because the paper is dry. We finished off with some white gouache details and white gouache spatters. Um, I was zoomed in so much, I didn't realize they were off camera. I hope you were able to see some of that at least. Um, so I'm Becca Hilber and thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'm always happy to see you guys and make art with y'all. Um, if you enjoyed this video, there are a few things you can do to help out this little art channel. You can share this video on your social network so your friends can see it, especially if I showed you a technique you weren't familiar with before or gave you ideas or inspiration. You can hit like and consider subscribing to my channel for more tutorials like this. I update at least once a week, usually twice. You can head on over to the blog if you just can't get enough to read um, some of my tutorial posts over there. There's seven years worth of good stuff. So I'm sure you will find something that interests you if you enjoyed this video. Uh, and you can just tell your friends. That would be huge for me. You know, help grow the Natasuit community. Um, gee, uh, <laughs> uh, shoot. I had it and I lost it. You'll know how that is. It's, it's getting kind of late. Um, so I hope you guys had a great day. I hope to see you guys again really soon. Oh yeah, I just remembered. If there, if you are so inclined, if you really, really enjoy this video and you really, really wanna help me make more content like this, you can head out to patreon.com slash natosoup for information on how to fund more content and where your money goes. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope I see you soon. Bye.